be good, wasn't okay, it? what are we okay, doing? Where enough. are we at? What, what's going All right. on here? So here we are. We're going to do a live episode, live video episode, two video episodes in a row. You can hold on to, to, to gonna, that puppet I don't want to. Okay. Okay. All right. So uh, go ahead. Okay. We're going to talk about <laughs> that. <laughs> so we're here at a platinum meeting, and so we decided to do an episode about uh, – networking with people, but mm -hmm. not just the networking that most people think of. And networking, of course, is important. Uh, how would you define networking? I mean, we've interviewed Ivan Miser on, uh, you know, I Love Marketing, where people can type in BNI. He's the founder of BNI and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But how would you define networking? And then I'll talk about genius networking. Well, I think, you know, it starts with your magic rapport formula. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably having in mind what it is that you actually want to um, accomplish why you're doing it in the first place. A lot of times people just go and say, oh, we got to do some networking, and they're just going and handing out business cards where it's, you know, getting their name out there, that right. kind of thing. But there's a very different type of um, reaction that you get when you're doing that than if you're going out with the intention of building a network of people that you can expand your capabilities with. Yes. You know, if yes. anybody, I mean, you look at the the people that we know, the people that you know, the people that we have on speed dial with any number of capabilities, anything we want to do or need to do or need to be introduced to somebody, to have that capability right in your right in your hands. You said a very key word, which is capability, mm -hmm. because it's one thing about getting to know a lot of people and getting to interact with them and going to meet them, but why do you want to meet them? What, it, what do you want from that? What do you want to learn? I mean, what is the objective? And part of mm -hmm. it, in the way we think about it, is capabilities. It's right. all about finding capabilities. I want to actually share something sure. uh, that, that you've seen before, and uh, many people in the room here have probably seen before because I've talked about it before. Uh, Dan Sullivan, his, uh, his capability and opportunity box. Perfect, yeah. Okay, so this is kind of a cool analogy to look at stuff, and then I'll share with you genius networking because the objective of this particular episode is to ha develop your own genius network, which is your wisdom network. Okay, people that have enormous wisdom and capabilities. And the way to do this is to be genius networking all the time. So you're not just networking, but you're actually networking with the very smartest people. So you want to be genius networking, and you want to create yourself as a genius networker. Now, before we get into that, there's this great thing that Dan Sullivan showed me many years ago, M equals O minus C. Does anyone know what that stands for? Marketing equals opportunity minus cost. That's actually a pretty good guess. No, actually, here's what it stands for. M is a mess is an equals an obligation minus a commitment. And whenever we have a mess in our life, it's usually because we have an obligation to something, but we're no longer committed to it. It's one of the reasons that relationships end, personal and professional. Uh, when you're not making enough money for what it is that you're doing, you get frustrated. Uh, how many of you used to have jobs that paid under $10 an hour at some time in your life? Any, anyone in the room here? Okay. Why do you still not have that job? Okay. Like, you don't have that job anymore because you'd have a lot of messes in your life if you still had the obligation of showing up, you know, to make, you know, $9 an hour or whatever. You would no longer, you're no longer psychologically committed to that sort of thing pay, correct? Now, some of you that are entrepreneurs have actually, you know, made zero and have actually probably paid $100 to $200 an hour just to stay in business at certain times. That's a mess, right? Because you still show up. So wh here's what, uh, now, when Dan showed me this, it was like, it hit me like a ton of bricks. I was like, wow, this is a really cool way of looking at the, you know, my life as an entrepreneur. So there's, I'm going to draw a couple of boxes, all right? Right here is a smaller box that has a um, C in it. And over here to the right is a larger box that has an O, okay? This is capabilities. This over here is opportunities, okay? So your opportunities, yell out, what are some of the opportunities that you guys came here for? Uh, you know, what, what, what do you want? What are, what are some opportunities? Networking, what else? Joint ventures, okay. What else? Knowledge, Knowledge. okay. What else? Ideas? Better newsletter. Better newsletter. Better 
clarity systems. More customers. Did someone say money? No. Is that what you said, money? Okay, well, let's just say money, because that's what I wrote up here. <laughs> okay, because all of those, the results of many of those things are money, right? They're going to translate into more customers, more money, more, okay. So, like, in order to have more money, better relationships, better clients, you know, better whatever, you know, be in better physical condition, you can also use this personally, too, you, you have to literally make your capabilities equal to your opportunities. And I know I, I don't draw very well, uh, even if it's straight lines. But uh, in order to get to, to reach your opportunities as an entrepreneur, your capabilities need to be as big as the opportunities or you won't get there. So what we share with I Love Marketing is we give people marketing capabilities. Okay, so, so through those capabilities, they can get their opportunity. So when Dean, you were just saying, who do we have on speed dial that has capabilities? Right. Any of the opportunities that me and Dean want in our life, we actually find people that have the capabilities, the know-how, the connections, the access, the skills, the strategies, the methods, the processes, et cetera, that we can call because if we can't figure it out with our brains on our own, and why would you ever do it on your own when you can borrow the brains of many other people, we can reach the capabilities that we want. If you I need, yeah. go ahead. I was just going to say, you know what's been instrumental for me in, in looking for those gaps in my capabilities is knowing my Colby index. Right. When we talk about that, like knowing which areas you're strongest in and which ones you're, mm -hmm. uh, you're weakest in. Like you and I are both, I'm a, I'm a 10 quick start. You're I'm a nine. nine quick start. But I'm a one implementer. Meaning doing actual the with uh, your hands with my hands. What about follows like using the tools and I'm a four and a four fact finder. So yeah. So four four ten one. I'm a and five. I I'm a five two nine three. So you have so, more follow through than me, which I find that hard to believe because but I, the follow through is kind of misleading because it's not about following things through. It's about organizing things into uh, into contexts, mm -hmm. which and systems, which I'm I'm good at that. But the one implementer knowing like doing the actual like uh, I used to pride myself on being able to do everything um, that it takes to create a product to uh, lay it all out in page maker I used to do and then create the website and put up the website I could do the whole thing and then you know now I realize it's like that's not my strength my strength right. is knowing what to do, not right. necessarily how to do it, and it's a yes. high, it's a, so I surround myself with people who know how to do mm -hmm. things that I know what to do, Right. and so having that capability, if you realize you're what so you're really, you're, you're so lucky you met me, you know that just here I really that. am, I yeah. was just thinking the same thing about you, yeah, all right, <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> but having the ability to, to, have a, a what to have an idea, but then know exactly who can uh, yep. bring that to reality. Yep, yeah. exactly, exactly. So, uh, so anything in your life that you want is a capability. And what we'll do towards the end, we'll do Q and A. If, because if, if, uh, yeah, we'll have yeah. to figure out on an episode like this. Yeah. So we'll need mics for that if anyone's going to talk, unless I repeat it. So. Think about all of the capabilities that you need in order to reach your opportunities. Sometimes you need to hire people. Sometimes you need technological capabilities. Sometimes you need cash flow management or just finan you know, financial, you need measurement. I mean, there's all kinds of uh, you know, databases, uh, all kinds of different capabilities. You know, we had Tellman up here talking yesterday and he has capabilities on how to build a list, you know, that sort of stuff. Copywriting could be a capability that you all need, things like that. So. Uh, once you build your capabilities up, then you can actually reach your opportunities because most people never reach their opportunities because they don't have enough capabilities. That's why it's really important to actually hire capabilities of other people if you don't have them because to try to do it all yourself and think you're just going to figure it out, I think that's one of the biggest reasons entrepreneurs or wannabe entrepreneurs do ne never make great success. And they can go, you know, you can either be a ladder entrepreneur or you can be a treadmill entrepreneur. And ladder entrepreneurs are the ones that are basically adding capabilities as quickly as they can in ways that they can actually use them. So here's the flip side of this. Once you develop a bunch of great capabilities and you've built your capability box up, 
you also have a situation in your life or your business where you have opportunities that are beneath your capabilities. And this is where messes come from. A mess is an obligation without a commitment is when you've become very skilled in a particular area and you're still working on stuff that's beneath you. You're working with people that are beneath you. That's what we talked about yesterday with lesser mortal stuff. You know, if you've spent 10 years learning a skill and you're still getting paid $10 an hour, you're going to have a big mess. Not just are you going to have a financial mess, you're going to have a psychological mess. Because when I work on things, the most important thing for me is not just the financial paycheck, it's the psychological paycheck. You know, because I want a really good psychological paycheck. So here's where Genius Network comes in, is with this small box over here, you either need to make your opportunities as big as the capabilities you currently have, or you need to say no, and you need to cross out some opportunities. And this is where it becomes very hard. Uh, and I mean, I can speak for myself. I mean, there are things that are good, but they're not great. And they used to be great, but as I've gotten better and I've gotten more skilled and I've developed a deeper network and a, you know, deeper capabilities, it's like in, in Jim Collins' book, Good to Great, he has the quote, uh, the enemy of the, of the great is the good. Right. And you've all heard that, right? The, the enemy of the great is the good. And many people put up with stuff in their life that's good, and they're not willing to cut it out. They're not willing to do the things to make it great. And here is your entire life as an entrepreneur in two boxes, mm -hmm. two sets of boxes, okay? You're gonna add your capabilities, you're gonna reach your opportunities, and unless you're a lifestyle entrepreneur and you just wanna reach a certain level and you don't wanna go bigger, great, okay? Then you can just maintain stuff. But if you're an achievement entrepreneur and you wanna keep growing, you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna build capabilities, you're gonna reach your opportunities, and guess what you're gonna do? You're gonna make your opportunities much bigger. How many of you operate that way? As soon as you reach one mountain, boom, you're looking at the next one, right? Okay, I think most people in the room are that way, okay? And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it, the, this is the game, and the game keeps getting bigger. You're playing for bigger stakes, but along the way, you keep building up better capabilities. So here's the beauty of all this, and here's how to simplify a lot of it and, and, and how I've thought it through. I don't need to learn all these capabilities. Right. All I need to do is find people that have unique abilities in particular areas that I do not and I need to meet those people, I need to hire those people, I need to access those people, and I need to utilize those people. I need to find skills, capabilities, and strategies that other people have and get them. Mm -hmm. Go get them. And the way to do that, so does this make sense? Does anyone have any questions about this? And if we do, can we bring a mic up here real quick, please? Uh, bring this gentleman here in the second row. Thank you, Gina. Just kind of stand up and so look cute on video. No, I just, I was, uh, we have it whistling and singing. Uh, it's this feedback. I never understood. How does it go? Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. Um, awesome. I have a question. I, I'm trying to make sense of your mess equals obligation minus commitment. And it makes more sense if it's mess to me. Mess equals opportunity minus capability, which is what you put up on there. Oh, that's that, good too. That'll work. I too. mean, yeah, I guess you I can mean, do that. Yeah, take two. Well, to tie into your boxes, which you can't build an opportunity. <laughs> I just thought. Hey, listen, this is this is Dan Sullivan stuff. Don't try, don't try to rewrite. <laughs> yeah, we'll uh, Dan. <laughs> I don't. I just don't understand. That. Maybe it's just me. Obligation minus commitment. How does that? Well, when you have a mess in your life. These are two different thoughts. Yeah, no, that was the thing thoughts. is that he was sharing yeah. you thoughts. this, okay. but that doesn't. Yeah. No, where, we'll see, where, where messes come from is when you have great capabilities and you're working on opportunities that are beneath you. Yeah, that's, your, that's why it should be. Then you have a mess. Equals, I thought it should be mess equals opportunity minus capability for that very reason. It makes sense to me. Like, oh, I got that. Honestly, that's whatever makes me. the most sense to you, <laughs> go for it. Okay. <laughs> I really want to understand your obligation minus commitment. I just can't get it. Yeah. Uh, so. Well, you are the perfect client. What we said, uh, yeah. slow learners <laughs> of money. I mean, this will usually take three years for that sort of thing. I mean, so. my obligation is like I have an obligation to like my employees for payroll minus my commitment is the same thing. And I have a mess. I mean, I don't. You ever had a relationship end because you cared about it less than the other person? Sure. Okay, it was a mess for you, right? You just had to end the relationship or you had to get it to the point where it was no longer, you were obligated to it. It's, how much do you get paid an hour? 250 250 an hour. Yeah. 
would you still produce the same work that you're doing now and be happy about it if I offered you $20 an hour? Uh, is it a nonprofit charity gig? Or for anything. <laughs> <laughs> if, if I said, you know, you know, you got to work for 10 bucks an hour for the next three months, how would you feel about that? Uh, it depends on what my commitment is. Right. I mean, if it's like you're a friend of mine and I want to have your business be successful or... Yeah. It's like no, but I'm you talking, you don't yeah. know me from Adam, it's 10 bucks an hour. Would you work for 10 bucks an hour based I, on what you know? Uh, it depends. Again, it depends on what I would <laughs> get out of it. I mean, it's... Seriously, I mean... No, I mean... There you go. See... I'm not bullshitting. I mean, I actually helped a friend's fr business who's in, up in Seattle. They're going back. No, I'm not talking about I, I, friends. Someone you don't okay. even know. Okay. Would you take a job at McDonald's starting tomorrow no, for the I next wouldn't. year? No, I there you go. <laughs> right. That's my no, point. No, no. Okay. That's okay. my okay. point. Okay. 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 <laughs> yeah. So, no, but thank you. And look, whatever, it, what, I have no vested interest. I just wanted to make sense for you. So if, if you wanted to, to change it so it makes sense for you, absolutely. You know, the whole point I'm making here, though, is your life as the entrepreneur is you're going to reach opportunities. People listen to I Love Marketing because they want to learn marketing skills. Every single person that reads a how-to book or attends a seminar has an objective. Even if they're not clear on it, they have a bigger future vision. And in order to reach their bigger future, you need capabilities to do it. And if you have a vision that is smaller than your capabilities, you're playing a small game. If you can play pro and you're still playing in the little leagues, you're going to have a mess. You're going to have an obligation to show up and play with a group of people you don't want to play to. You're not committed to that because it doesn't, it, it doesn't excite you. Yeah. yeah. Dominating Thank you. Adults. Thank you. All right. So here's hey, hey, what. Hey. Oh, go ahead. Boy, this is what happens when you start Hold giving on. mics to everybody. Yeah. Now, you got me hooked on Success Magazine now, so on the, on the flight over, I was reading it, and there was a great article Thank you. Uh, where Chris Brogan uh, interviews Richard Branson. Yep. And this totally clicked with me now. He, you know, he was, he was it, it's sort of unfathomable to most people how Richard Branson has created this, you know, this, this empire. Uh, what, like 300 businesses in 57 yeah. countries or something like that? Yep. And yet never goes into the office, you know, he thinks, he, th he thinks of the opportunities. Yeah. And then speaks to his advisors about them. Yeah. Figures out and, and finds the smartest and best people to implement them. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, he's got a phenomenal model. I mean, he just has the, the capacity to do this. Right. At, at an extreme level. Yeah. So this is, this is great. Awesome. Yeah. And, you know, Richard is one of those intuitive entrepreneurs, you know. I mean, some people just kind of get it and do things in a certain way. And so, yeah, absolutely. So thank you. Uh, yeah, and he really, you know, he likes working at home, too, which is kind of funny. Because well, I asked uh, Richard before, did uh, he, uh, he used to go into the office when he had his first company. But once he has a whole bunch of different companies, where do you go into? Mm -hmm. Right. So it's like it's almost a, a, a way he's designed this sort of life to so he doesn't actually go into the office. He even spent a good portion of his life living on boats and stuff like that. All right, so here's what we're going to do now. Every one of you has a tool. This is a filled out version, but for the sake of this uh, episode, we're actually not going to show the screen. I'm just going to actually draw it. Everyone has a sheet that says My Genius Network. And on the right-hand side, there is a there is a some circles where there's a little person in the middle and there's eight circles around the person in the middle and there's a crowd of people around that person in the middle and that would symbolize you. And so those of you watching this at home or if you're listening to this on iTunes, you can actually see the video on ilovemarketing.com. Um, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw it out. So you are in the middle. Okay, let's draw a stick figure of Dean. Okay, <laughs> that would be Dean Jackson. Right there in the middle, right? All happy and stuff because he's, because he's hanging out with me. Uh -huh. All right? And so we've got circles. We're going to draw eight circles. So if you're at home, draw eight circles surrounding the box. And I'm going to show you the Joe Polish method of thinking about relationships. So on this particular sheet, those of you here at Platinum, we're going to actually have you fill this out today. You can do it during breaks, during times where we can do some thinking. Uh, well, hopefully you're doing thinking the entire day. But if we actually take some time to write, then 
up at the top, it says relationships to leverage, okay? And so those you just think of, who are the most important people in your life? Those are the relationships to leverage. And then you're going to select um, eight of those people. And if you'll see from the circles on the sheet, there's actually a line that splits it through the middle, okay? So the, w the reason these lines are up there is up at the top, you're going to put the name of the person, and on the bottom part of the circle, you're actually going to put the skill or the capability that that person has. Because when you think about, you know, yesterday we asked you to think of the questions, where are you, where do you want to go, how are you going to get there, right? And to think about 12 months out using the Dan Sullivan question is, if we were to meet here a year from today, what needs to happen both personally and professionally for you to feel happy with your progress? And so many of you thought of, okay, a year from now, here's kind of what I want. Here's where I want to go. Well, if you were to think, who are the most eight most important people in your life right now that could help you get there? Who are those people, and what are the capabilities? And some of those capabilities would be what? Like, what are some of the capabilities that you guys can think of? Not the person, but just the capability that would help you get to your goal. You can call it out as a category if you'd like. So just yell out what it Connection. Connection. Copywriting. Speaking engagements. Speaking engagements. Technology. Technology. What is that? HR. HR, okay. Graphic artists, okay. Finance. Influencer. Finance. Finance. Someone with a large network. Ooh. Could you, wait, that could episode be a tragedy right there. Wow. Ghostwriter, Ghost okay, awesome. There, I love marketing. Hey. The best, the very best capability. Yeah, go ahead there. and put us in one of those circles. Yeah, yeah. So that's what you do. So what I'd like to do, everyone listening to this, unless, of course, you're listening to this episode while you're driving. Don't do that. Uh, see, we, see, here's, so you guys know, this is like the stuff you say when you're actually recording audio stuff. You've got to think through what is the listener actually going, how are they going to be engaging when they're with watching, information? When they're watching this while they're talking. I mean, you know, many people could be doing, uh, Pil yeah. they could be doing Pilates That's while they're true. listening to this right now. That's true. They could be, what sort of weird activities that we could mention on, on this mm -hmm. video could someone possibly be doing while they're listening? Like, what are some of the weirdest places you guys have listened? Okay, cooking. Yeah. Uh, you can maybe get zucchini yeah, in the bathroom. You can get zucchinis and you can lay them out as your genius network. And you can pizza. That's true. Yeah, my, my pizza network. Yeah. Spelunking. Spelunking, caving. Yeah. Wow. Uh huh. Swim. Has anyone listened to it while Scuba swimming? Diving. So you got those yeah. headphones that are waterproof. Okay. Uh huh. Yes. He works. At, give, give him a mic real quick. Can you guys be ready with a mic if someone talks for more than a statement, please? Thank you. You're setting a diamond worth 100000 Setting a diamond worth... And you made us the I Love Marketing. Yeah. Uh, where is it? All right. Check this out. This was so cool. He actually gave one to me and Dean. Mine's much nicer than Dean's. So he <laughs> says it. Uh, no, I'm kidding. They're both the same. And uh, where did your business card go? What is your website? Javan Collection. How do you spell it? J-I-V-A-N Collection. Okay. And you actually made this for me and Dean, and it's, it's beautiful, actually. Something it's, from what the is heart. This? Yeah. It's a mini version of iPhone while listening to I Love Marketing. Mm -hmm. And it says on the back, Elf, Dean, Jackson, and Joe Polish. That is higher status because your name's first. That's All right. <laughs> but it says, uh, I Love Marketing, and it's a display here made out of silver, and it's awesome. Can you make Yes. Thank you. So, welcome. Thank you. Great. Uh, so, okay. So, here's what I'd like everyone to do that's at home. Let's do that right now. I want you to actually, since all of you have this form, if you want to brainstorm first, you can do that. If you immediately know who the eight people are, then just go ahead and write it down. But just, let's, let's take like a minute, just for the sake of, and I'll continue to talk while you guys think this through. Uh, for everyone that's listening at home. So what you do, you get a sheet of paper, you put a circle in the middle, you get eight circles, and you just write around it. So, you know, Dean Jackson would be one of my people, you know. And here's what's kind of cool, is that you're going to meet people here that we recommend that you actually put as part of your Genius Network. How many of you have actually met someone in the room here that you would want as part of your Genius Network this week, or this, since yesterday? Awesome. 
See, that's the whole point. That's why you come to meetings like this, to develop relationships, because you will meet people. In Strategic Coach, Dan has a program called U times 10, which is about how to, it's really focused on 10 times in your, your business. And he calls the people in the room multipliers, mm -hmm. because all of these, so think of yourselves that way. What if you started thinking of people that you associate with, or who are the multipliers? You know, who are the people, like I said yesterday, uh, you know, some people are a fountain, some people are a drain. You know, you want the people on your Genius Network that are fountains. You want people that are energy chargers, not energy drainers. And if you can eliminate spending time with people that are energy char uh, br chargers, energy drainers, then you obviously are freeing up that time to spend it with the most important people. So here's the cool thing about developing a Genius Network. And I'll go through this, Dean, and then I'll shut up, and then you can say some things. <laughs> Imagine that. I'm kind of enjoying it. Are you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So once you, 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 so what is, if I had to think of a skill and call a capability that Dean has, I have my own ideas for a skill or a capability, what do you think Dean's capabilities are? Critical thinking. That's a great point. Mm. What is it? <laughs> I say Amateur that one more time falconry, really loud. He said. Uh, say, say that into the mic. I was just saying uh, amateur falconry. Amateur falconry. Yeah. I don't understand what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to tap dance and say, oh, yeah, because see, as a speaker, sometimes when people like, like just yeah. blurt shit out, you're like, yeah, got, gotcha, great. Next. I mean, you know, you, but I, I honestly got him trying to figure out what that means. Uh, All right, so I'll think about it. We'll, okay. we'll, have, a, we'll have a meeting about, over this. Yeah. Anyone else? What Critical thinking. I think that sounds good, yeah. Provides the enrollment. Yes, you're right. right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Dean is a buffer. That's yeah. true. Yeah, Dean. Dean is my buffer. <laughs> yeah. You're like, uh, oh, Dean, can you check this out? You know, this is I love marketing, and this is the I love marketing. Well, I got it from IKEA, but anyway, there you go. That's great. All right, so uh, give yourself so a you, hug. You, 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 you got this here, and you know you only need a few multipliers and movers and players on your genius network and to be in connection with in order to totally change everything in your business. And here's the cool thing. You can actually niche the use of this genius network tool. And where did the, where'd the thing go? Where did what thing go? The, the sheet of paper that had, <laughs> where'd you put it? Give me another one since you just snagged well, it. Well, what happened to that one? Yeah, good question. Watch out. I guess okay, grab it for me there. there. You go. There Handsome you go. fella. Did it go down here? No. Here you go. There's a poltergeist up here. What is going that on? Really is, uh, how's, that, how's that happening? All right, so here's another sheet. I'd really like to. More, more, okay, here it is. Dean, look Rewind at this. the tape. There it is. There, no, no, you threw it back it with the heart. You oh, were that's holding what it. That's it was. Okay. All right. Because I, I was sitting there thinking fault. to myself. Don't no, edit any of this. We'll keep it all you, this on video. This no, is that's good what to happened say. is you threw it back when you picked up the heart. Did I? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. We'll have to go back on the We're video. We're going to have to look at the tape and okay. see what yeah. actually happened. If you're watching it, just rewind and place it in the comments, please, so we can see what's happened. <laughs> that is the best. I'll never hear the end of this one now. This will be, God, I hope you're the one that threw it back there. Just <laughs> <laughs> okay. That is right. funny. So, um, <laughs> wow. All right. So let me see, please. Okay, there you go. Okay, so on the uh, left-hand side, you'll see where it has eight lines. And after you've filled out those circles, you write the names of the people and who they are, wisdom that they have, how I can help them, and how they can help me. And here's the key. Here's how I develop relationships with people. I never expect anyone to do anything for me without creating value for them first. Mm -hmm. Life gives to the giver and takes from the taker. It's just the way it works. It's a karmic thing. If you want to get stuff in life, shift your thinking and behavior if you have any of it. And I know many of you here, this is the way you operate because I have a lot of friends in the room. 
Uh, I know the way many of you operate, and the reason that I'm friends with many people that are in the room is because I tend to align myself with people that are aligned with me. They're people that are just good people, and they're always looking. You know, when I want to do business with someone, I freaking pay them. I have a lot of people that will do stuff for me for free, and I will still cut them a check because people should get paid for their knowledge. People should get paid for what it is they do. So operate that way. I'll take a question from you, then I'll keep going. So go ahead, or a comment or whatever. Seth Green, BigMoneyImplementation.com. We double your sales or give you your money back. Uh -huh. You're famous for See how he snuck that pitch in there? <laughs> okay. Yeah. You're famous for being a hyper-connector. What I'm wondering is, let's say there's someone in my, that I want in my genius network that I'm not connected to yet, like you're connected to some amazing people. Yep. How are you making, obviously we want to deliver value, but how are you making that connection? How are you reaching out to get someone like Richard Branson to take your phone call? Yeah, well, that's where I'm going with all of this. That's, okay. what, that's what this sheet will help you do. So first off, you identify who they are. Who do you, so if it's Richard Branson, what is the wisdom that Richard Branson has? Now, see, a lot of people want to meet Richard Branson. They want an introduction to Richard Branson. What's kind of funny, we even did this on the episode number 29 on ilovemarketing.com, the magic rapport formula. I cannot tell you every week uh, how many people contact my office or try to get through through Facebook or some way. I've got the greatest thing in the world that can save people, whatever, you know, mm -hmm. for good reasons or for business reasons, can you give me an introduction to Richard Branson? And I got that request so many times that I actually talked about it in an episode, and people were like, well, you know, well, you know, do the same thing that I did. You know, first off, uh, raise a bunch of money for his foundation, you know, pay a couple hundred thousand dollars to have him come speak, you know, that's how I met Richard Branson. So there's not always, sometimes Oh yeah, you just, never mind. No. That's what they end up saying. Oh, yeah. Oh. Well, now, now, now <laughs> granted, granted, there are people that I have introduced to Richard Branson, okay, uh, because they had something that was big enough, and they did something to first develop rapport with me, not just say, oh, Joe, it's okay that you've, you know, raised over, you know, $5 million for Virgin and Virgin Unite, you know, that's okay, but I just want a free introduction, you know, it's like, and they just have this, like, entitlement attitude that I should just introduce them because they have the next best thing. And I'm like, you know, it, that's not quite how it works. So, what I'll, but, but here's, here's how you do it to answer your question. You first off identify who are the people you want to meet, wisdom they have, how can you help them, and how can they help you. And so you got to get the how can you help them right first. So my strategy with Richard Branson was first I went to dinner, and I gave a $15,000 donation in 2006 to go to dinner with him. At the dinner... I was listening to what he was saying, the conversations that were talking about, that ended up talking about Virgin Unite. And, and the thing that I really resonated with uh, initially with Virgin Unite was the Branson School for Entrepreneurship, because I am a person that would rather support entrepreneurism and capitalism than probably any other thing in the world. Because I think entrepreneurs will solve, I think most social problems can be solved through conscious capitalism. So how do I raise money for the Joe Polish Foundation? Well, I don't, I don't have that, but if you're, like, who's someone you want to meet? Do you want to really meet Richard Branson? No, that was just an, I mean, okay, sure, yeah. but that was just an example. Yeah, but see, that's kind of an extreme example on sometimes, because for one, most people, do they really need to meet Richard Branson, right. or do they want a picture with him? And if someone just wants a picture with Richard Branson or There's something. There's an app for that. What's that? There's an app for that. Yeah, you can Photoshop it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah, cool. So what I'll do, I'll continue to go through this, and I think it'll answer that question, but that's exactly where I was going. So, you know, if you want a picture with someone, for instance, I mean, there's lots of events, you know, the, where I met Mark Zuckerberg, where I met Bill Gates, where I met Jeff Bezos, Barry Diller, Rupert Murdoch, um, you know, was, was at All Things Digital with uh, Lisa. Where's, is Lisa in the room? Huh? No. Okay. No. Uh, but, you know, that was, you know, I, I went, so, you know, you can interact with a lot of famous people. You know, I mean, I, I uh, went to the Gates Foundation um, in, um, in Seattle uh, last year to their, their annual thing and, you know, met Bill and Melinda again. Uh, I, I took Brendan Bouchard with me and uh, Eunice, and who else did I take? I can't remember who else I took with me. Robin Robbins. You know, we went to the, the, the headquarters for Gates Foundation. So you can, you know, for a couple thousand bucks, you can actually attend certain events and just meet some of these people and start it there. So, you know, but, but the thing is, most people don't need to, you know, meet famous people. They just need capability. So this applies for someone that's world famous or it applies to anyone. So you list who they are, 
So I'm going to give you some examples, uh, since for the people listening or watching, Dan Sullivan, wisdom he has, multiplier game. Uh, Dan has this process multiplier game, and he's just, uh, you know, he's a genius. How can I help him create value for him, and how he can help me sounding board uh, and 10x talk? So me and Dan Sullivan do a podcast called 10x Talk, which is actually launching in about, uh, you know, less than three weeks from now. And it'll be 10x talk in its 30-minute podcast. So who else is on my Genius Network? John Benson, wisdom that he has, video sales letter psychology. Um, how can I help him? Uh, connections and uh, be a door opener and how he can help me with uh, video sales letters. Um, Daniel Amen and Ned Hollowell, uh, wisdom they have, ADD, ADHD, and addiction stuff. And how can I help them marketing, package their services, be a sounding board, and how they can help me, anything related to my dysfunctional brain. Uh, and so Dean Jackson, wisdom he has, strategic marketer. Uh, how can I help Dean grow I Love Marketing? How can he help me grow I Love Marketing? <laughs> okay. So, uh, you know, Tim Polson, uh, coaching and contest model. Uh, how can I uh, help him, you know, money and opportunities? And how can he help me... Uh, basically leverage, uh, run, build uh, what we're doing here with Platinum. And uh, I also put as a category my 25K group. Wisdom they have, tons of business capabilities. How can I help them brainstorm ideas? I mean, people in my 25K group love elegant ideas and how they can help me refer people to me. So those are some of the ways that I use it. So that's you for... Can have, uh, I mean, uh, you can have different circles for different categories too. Like I, right. I went through this... Um, Tool. We did this at, at 25K one time. We went through the, the circles. And I actually took this, I did this for, uh, for my house, too. Yep. Like the category of who is my genius network for running my house, my, my personal uh, environment. So we've got, you know, Courtney, who does all of the, like our personal assistant. And mm -hmm. we've got Jolene, who does all the housekeeping and stuff. Richard right. Hart, anything that needs to be fixed or anything that needs to be... Uh, Maintained what th kind of things a husband would do, right? That's what he does, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's well, really what we of, decided is we needed a wife and a husband. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, on a scale of that's one, <laughs> on a scale of one to ten, how how good of a husband do you think you are to your wife, Sonny? I think I'm I'm pretty good, but because <laughs> I I can now that now I, I know I'm a one a no implementer, right? Then I can sub in the the people who have the capabilities that I don't. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, and you can do that with this tool. There this tool will solve marriage problems. That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, so here's the deal. Uh, no, and actually, what Dean just said is is right. You can use this for any category that you want. Okay. And if you want to put more than eight circles, if you want to draw it out, that's fine. But you know, eight seems to work pretty well. well. I look at it. It's almost like the Hollywood model. You know, like when when people come together for. To put a movie together, yep. You know, you get the 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 best director of photography. You get the director. You get the uh, actors. Each of the the people in the roles. You get the the people in the crew. All of those capabilities that come together mm -hmm. to create that result. And it's really about creating whatever result it is that that you're interested in creating. That's what a, that's what a genius network can do is help you create one super unit that does. Uh, that does a lot. So mm -hmm. think, think of it in terms of like any category you want. Like Dean was saying, household. If you want to do one, if you want to be a better parent, okay, who do you know? Who are eight people that just would be great people to talk with, have conversations with, that, that have methods? If you want to get in better health, you might have right. on your Genius your Network. Team. What would be an example of if you wanted uh, to get in better shape? You would maybe have a personal trainer a nutritionist, maybe a sleep expert, a massage therapist, a chiropractor, a yoga instructor, who else? A chef, hypnotherapist, acupuncture, what? Functional medicine doctor, there you go. Endocrinologist. Endocrinologist. All of those. Proctologist. There you go. All right, so. Um, ex I yes. like the way you poked me with your finger when you said yeah, yeah, proctologist. Yeah, like that. <laughs> Was, uh, what was I communicating there? I wasn't I even aware know, of that. That's what I was wondering. I mean, what's going like... on? I mean, you, never, you never know what the hell. All right. So, uh, yes, go ahead. Just real quick. Can, can the who 
be an occupation as opposed to a person's name if you don't know somebody? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. A, so if you don't know, if you don't know the, the name, yeah. So yeah. if you say you need a copywriter, but you don't know a copywriter, write down copywriter. Say you need a software person, or say you need a personal trainer, but you don't know who yet, but at least you know what you have. So here's the beauty of doing a genius network and creating a genius network initially, is you can actually fill in the capabilities you need. Because at the end of the day, when we're trying to grow and build something, you're looking for capabilities. In a lot of ways, you don't even care about who's delivering it to you. Here's the hardest thing for some people, and I use this analogy, let's say, for carpet cleaners, but it applies for everyone. How many, does, does getting off the truck make sense to all of you if I say a carpet cleaner who's doing the work himself but needs to get off the truck to grow his business? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, everybody has some area where you need to get off the truck, okay? And when, when we do events with nothing but carpet cleaners in the room, we actually di did one uh, where, where we actually had a contest, like a get off the truck contest to help people get off the truck, and part of it is in their minds, it is so difficult to get off the truck because they have built their business and their client base about expecting them. And they believe that it's all about them, that, well, no one's going to do it as good as me, the, the clients you're used to. And that's all true to a certain degree. Not always, but it's true to a certain degree. They're used to the relationship, and they sold the relationship, not a carpet cleaning service. And so they have the hardest time bringing in like, you know, you need to build your business like freaking Lassie. I mean, you just throw in a different dog. There could be like 400 of them. It's still Lassie, right? But it's like, there are certain businesses that you can't do that. Like, what would happen to 25K if there was no Joe? You know, there's always the thing, well, what happens if you get hit by a truck? But I'm like, well, if I get hit by a truck, I get hit by a fucking truck, right? So it's like, whatever. Sorry, you shouldn't cuss like that. That's All right, so <laughs> seriously, please. I'll this tone is, it down, yeah. Yeah. Show some respect for our clients. If we had look. a swear jar, I would be rich. <laughs> I mean, really. Dude, I should That's freaking get a I swear love jar. I mean, swear jar. Yeah. How, how, how about, I'll do one even better. A hundred dollars from Dean every time that I swear. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we will raise more money and everyone wins. Okay? All right. So, <laughs> so um, I can't remember what I was saying. Oh, yeah. La oh, Lassie, Lassie. Yeah. And, and before, we, before we wrap up, I uh -huh. want you to do the Blue Man versus yeah, Siegfried right. and Roy. Right. Okay, that will yeah. be really useful to talk about. So, the, yeah, identify the capabilities first. But going back to the sheet that Dean has taken from me here, um, if, you, if you take the 30 people and brainstorm first, just get that out. This is kind of like Dean's version of uh, the um, Focus Finder. If you've ever watch the Focus Finder video. How many of you watch Focus Finder on I Love Marketing? Mm -hmm. Is that like the most amazing video on time management like mm -hmm. ever? Mm -hmm. So watch it. It's 50 minutes of Dean basically explaining how to structure your time. But he talks about where you just like brain dumb, right? Mm -hmm. What do you You're call right. it? Yeah, yeah. That's it. I call it brain dump. Get, it, get everything out yeah. on paper. So you get all of the names and the relationships out and then you identify the people. Then you take them over here because if you don't go through the process Every person in 25K that's ever done this, and, and we're talking in 25K, these are very connected, very bright, very wealthy, smart individuals, and most of them are pretty good at developing a, a network. I mean, they've all built multi-million dollar businesses, so in order to do that, they obviously, you know, the, they're, they're, they've had to figure out some capabilities. And the, the biggest feedback after we take them through filling out this tool for about 30 minutes, where we actually do nothing but take 30 minutes and fill out this tool. What they all say afterwards is, you know, the biggest takeaway is that I am not spending enough time nurturing my most important relationships. That's what, and, yeah. and they don't say that before having to fill it out. And if I just talk about it like I'm talking about it now and they don't take the 30 minutes to do it, they literally never say that. So you, all I'm asking is that take this process and devote 30 minutes to it this week and then do it again. In any area of your life where you actually want to really improve your ability to network and connect with people, sit down and think this through. This one sheet of paper, the process, not the paper, but taking you through the thinking process of really how can you create value for people that you want to meet and then identifying how they can create value for you can, can totally change your life. Uh, did you have a comment, sir? Yeah. Um, this is 
really cool and I'm thinking of Dave Logan's stage three because you're drawing mm -hmm. hubs and spokes. Cool. Yep. So have you taken this genius network process and created it into you know, Dave, his terminology of stage four mm -hmm. and connecting it so everybody has one another's backs? Yeah, yeah. Actually, that's a good point. Have you ever heard my interview with Dave? Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, thank it's you. Completely awesome. Yeah, we actually have an app for this. We have a private app for people in 25K, and I'm thinking about making it into a public app so that people can literally access it on their phone or their iPad or whatever. Um, and so, yeah, but you got a good point. I'll actually talk to David about it. I mean, I guess, I mean, you kind of said it too. I mean, when you were talking about nurturing relationships. Uh huh. So, I mean, if you're nurturing relationships and having that other person's back, then you're probably introducing them to these other people that are part of your network and. Mm -hmm. Hopefully helping one another that way too, right? Yes, this, totally, totally. It, you know, this kind of thinking really is profound though, mm -hmm. when you start thinking about filling in those hubs. Right. And you start thinking about, if you were to think about your business, for instance, a really profound way to think about this is to think about this as your business, but not put yourself in any of the circles. What kind of a, a impact would that have if you were thinking about your business without you involved in it, period? What would that look like? That's a pretty interesting exercise, you know? And you know what we should do again? Because I, this, is, this is a perfect example of, uh, we did it a couple of years and then we didn't. And Eunice, are you back there? This year at the conference, we're doing our conference on October 3rd, 4th, and 5th. And for a couple of years, I literally printed Genius Network napkins. Were any of you at one of the conferences where I've done that in the past? Okay. And, you know, when people go to cocktail parties or they go out and they network, like there's going to be a reception. So we had an evening reception. You know, we, we, sometimes we do receptions, sometimes we don't. depends. And I was like, you know, a lot of people get uncomfortable, especially when they go to conferences by themselves, because most people go to conferences by themselves. And if you don't know anyone, I mean, you're going to go and you're going to mingle, and what the hell do you say? Mm -hmm. And so I would always tell people, you know, go and ask people, you know, if you could be a superhero, any superhero, who would you be? Or if you uh, could have any superpowers, you know, uh, whatsoever, what would they be? And, you know, just do anything to initially start a conversation, because once you get through talking, uh, because two things are happening. You're either in connection with someone or you're trying to escape. <laughs> okay, those are the two ways of interacting with human beings. You're either connected or you're like, get me the hell out of here, right? <laughs> it's a, so, so, th so trying to make it easy for people to interact and connect. And so what we did is we gave everyone uh, a napkin. And we said there's eight slots on this napkin. They're just like a little person in the middle with eight slots. And it says whoever you go out and meet that you'd want to have on your Genius Network, just go out. And I swear to God, we, every freaking time we've done that, we literally have to shut the thing down. Right. Usually at a reception, people, you know, they go to bed and everything. I mean, people are just talking and they're networking and they're writing their phone numbers and their emails. I was like, oh, and that is the greatest way to run a reception. And what do I do? I forget about it. We don't do it again. Perfect. And it's my own yeah, shit. You know? so, so it's like... Uh, it, it, really, it really is. And so I would, I would encourage you, I, I love the line, and everyone's heard it, that you know, if you can't write it on the back of a napkin, it's probably not worth doing. Mm -hmm. You can do this on the back of a napkin. Mm -hmm. If you're ever stuck anywhere and you're like, you know what, I need to figure out something for my health. Who do I need on my Genius Network? Who, what are the capabilities I need? Or I got a mess. I need to figure out how to eliminate this mess. Who knows how to figure this out? Because you know, when there's other people that can figure things out and you don't, that's kind of silly. So having said that, um, the replication process. I said about well, Sig Freedom. Yeah, that process, Talk if you were that. imagining, you know, right here, if you were imagining you in the center of this, especially with relationship to your business, then you are the star of that. You're the, you're the main character in it. And so going back, this was whenever uh, Roy was mauled by a tiger, probably 10 years ago now or, or so. Before that, I had, right it was so kind of spooky because right before this actually happened to, to Roy, I was on a plane and I was flying to LA and I was reading in the um, um, Forbes magazine, how they have the, the top 100 entertainers, the highest paid entertainers. And, and on that list, I saw that Siegfried and Roy were on the list and they had uh, just signed a contract with the Mirage, and they were uh, making $28 million a year, um, and they had to do 
uh, eight shows a week for 40 weeks out of the year. And I thought, man, that's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of work for, for consistently doing that show. And then for, for a up on the million. list, no, but further up on the list then, I saw the Blue Man Group. And the Blue Man Group had earned $69 million in that same year. And there was a whole story on the guys, and none of the guys that actually formed the Blue Man Group actually even performed. They, don't, they didn't do it anymore. They're all, you know, they've got all, there were 34 blue men that, were, that they've trained to do all of this stuff, and they had concurrent shows going on in Las Vegas and Chicago and New York and Paris and Toronto and all these things, and the guys who invented it are off, you know, one of them lives in Florida, he's got a big horse property, another guy lives in the Caribbean, and they're off, you know, just doing whatever it is they do, and it struck me the difference between setting up your business so that you get rich or setting up your business so that you get famous. And it struck me what a precarious situation it is if your business is built around being famous. Because literally two months later, Roy was mauled by a tiger and the whole thing shut down. They had to, you know, 200 plus people out of jobs, the Mirage was like, you know, they had all of this theater, all of the, this revenue that was dependent on Siegfried and Roy showing up. Because you had to, you know, you imagine if you're going to see Siegfried and Roy, you're going to see Siegfried and Roy. You're not going to see two guys and a tiger. I mean, Joe and I couldn't go and, and fill in for it tonight, filling in <laughs> two guys and a tiger, right? right. I mean, it's... <laughs> You'd be disappointed if it wasn't Siegfried and Oh, Roy, and the funny right? thing, too, which you wrote about, too, and it was creepy the way you wrote about it because Dean was writing about tiger-proof your business, yeah. right? And so his, his whole thing... It, <laughs> what? Uh, why is that, that weird? Is that weird? That was... But I'm saying, like, what would happen to your business if you were mauled by a tiger? Right. What would happen to your business? So, right? I mean, uh, people say it all the time. If you get hit by a bus or you get I'm whatever. trying to interpret the what woo happen? sort of response. Yeah, they were thinking get, it was a little bit uh, like, like, no, no, but see insensitive, the, maybe. See, see yeah. the, no, but he He's wrote a, But here's the thing. He wrote about this before it happened. Yeah. And that was the weirdest thing. And that's why it was so creepy because Dean oh, wrote no, about I didn't talk about tiger-proofing before... It I happened. thought you I did. Wrote, no, no, I wrote about oh, it Oh, just after. bring it back up. Get it all emotional again. Yeah, here, yeah. <laughs> and let me diffuse it a little. And no, then, no. You know, here you the are. The whole thing, I wrote about tiger proofing after because all I wrote about was making your, about your business being rich or being famous and, and you know, separating yourself from. Right. Well, and you also said that, like, the, the guys that actually started the Blue Man Group, mm -hmm. they actually, uh, there was four of them because yeah. in the beginning when Three they started, they, they had, like, part-time jobs right. and they needed to have an extra like blue guy so it's kind of like so when they were first on them could show when up. they were first on the truck you know it's yeah. like the blue man were on the truck they had their own version right. of doing that and so they had a fill-in and then after they became you know world famous then they did intel commercials and maybe yeah. the, the grammys or whatever they could but learn other, the moves yeah, yeah. So, okay. so okay so who do we you first and then we'll go to you yeah, yeah. real real short Dean, yeah, to address your point, I've been thinking about that a lot, and I call it the curse of being indispensable. The that curse helps. of being indispensable. Yeah, right. great point. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Hello, am I? Okay, Hi. all right. Um, I, Dean, you, you keep coming up with these insights that are just spectacular. I th hope everyone listened to what he just said. You know, what if we, you got mauled by a tiger? Right. I mean, that insight right there set off a, a plethora of ideas mm -hmm. in my mind as far especially anyone who's in a, a service provider situation like I am. Mm -hmm. um, we have to look at making uh, either information or some type of value um, accessible while we're not having to be there. That is one in extremely insightful mm -hmm. way where we can uh, exponentialize our, or exp I don't know if that's a real word or mm -hmm. not, but anyway, where we can have exponential influence on um, benefits, goods, services, to um, what we can provide where we are removed from the situation. So right. that your insight in is just, 
Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Start writing stuff down. I mean, that's, you know, when we start thinking about that, that, you know, uh, my friend Scott Ginsberg, he said to this great thing, he says, is everything you know written down somewhere? And that's kind of an interesting thought. You, you observe, like, every single thing we do, we're recording it. We're writing it down. We're, we're you know, making sure that it's, it's out there. We're, if we ever got mauled by Tiger, we're going to be like Tupac and still putting out stuff with all the stuff we've recorded that hasn't been out yet. I mean, you know, <laughs> when, when you're doing things that are kind of about you, that's what you, you have to do is start, you know, packaging Can everything you do. Yeah, yeah that's so that you're leaving this wake behind you of things that are going to live on. You know, everything that you're doing, is it you know, doing it one time or are you doing something that you can, you know, memorialize and continue on? You know, we talk about that 50-minute focus finder. I did that one talk, one time, recorded it, and now it lives on all the time. There's probably people watching that 50-minute focus finder video right now while we're recording this video. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You know, it's that, that dinner that we had with Dan Kennedy where he was like, uh, was it you that asked him? I think it, you, you, Tim, asked him about me or something. And he, he rattled off. I think it was. I, I'm not sure. But we had uh, Dan Kennedy actually at, at, at our event last yeah. year. And then at dinner for the Platinum members, we had a session where uh, Dan came and just, uh, you know, during dinner did Q&A for probably like almost that two hours. He asked us if we get our wardrobe at the same Walmart. He, did he yeah. ask that? Yeah, yeah. What would you expect from him, right? Perfect. It's like Jesus. The, the best thing is when I did the roast with Dan, and I had a thing called walrus marketing, and it was me <laughs> on top of a walrus with uh, the, on the walrus we painted Dan Kennedy's head, oh, yeah. and it said uh, 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 no. He had the no BS letter, and it was like you know my comp it was eat your competition alive. The thing said um, you know smother your walrus marketing, smother your competition alive, and there it was it was me writing uh, Dan Kennedy. Perfect. Basically, like, that's good. It was great, and so we. There's always been a busting going on back and forth between me and Dan. But he, uh, uh, I'm trying to even think why he brought this up. What did he say? That. Uh, oh no, I know what it was. Okay, he he said he goes one thing that Joe's done that I've not really focused on is length of relationships. He goes if you look at the people in his life, he has long. You know, like Eunice has been my assistant for 17 years, and I. Uh, part of that is because I'm always doing this sort of genius network thinking. Mm -hmm. And going to the Blue Man uh, versus Siegfried and Roy, uh, if you use this genius network tool, think of the capabilities of how to get yourself out of off the truck. <laughs> you know, like uh, I can guarantee you that Eunice is instrumental in my life as it relates to stuff, as are several other people that are here in the room, instrumental in making, you know, my company happen, making things happen. And, uh, you know, like even mm -hmm. when we started doing I Love Marketing, we said, you know, what would happen if 50 years from now people listen to this? Would it still be relevant? Would it still be valuable? That and was what this it, whole it, idea, it, you know, I, I don't care envisioning a bookshelf right. full of, you know, all the, you know, 1 to 50, it'll be a 50 virtual, to 100. It'll be a like virtual a, bookshelf, but still. Yeah. No, no, I mean having the, I, real, uh, the I know, real deal. I know what you're saying. Yeah. I know what you're saying. Okay. So... This tool, you can write this on the uh, yeah, on a napkin. I mean, you can do this anywhere in 100 years from now. You're still going to want to develop a genius network. So use this genius network tool. Share it with other people. Just don't teach it and say, oh, here's something I came up I hate when people do that. Mm. Like, just give us credit for it, you know. Just say, you know, there's a cool tool that Joe Polish and Dean Jackson not, no, I'm kidding. All right, so <laughs> how, do, how, how, do we, how do we wrap this up? How do we wrap this up? Because look at the time. I understand. Look at the time. How do you want to do this? How many of you can see yourself doing something like that with the different circles, with the different projects, the different areas of your life? That's, that's all you want to do. I mean, take that time. When we talk about, you know, the 50-minute focus finders and doing your 50, 20, 50s, blocking off time, this is a valuable thing to do with that time. Just think about the different areas of your life. Think about who you need, or, and sometimes in your business, when you start looking at your capabilities and you look at the opportunities, you start to see what are the capabilities that are holding me back from capturing these bigger opportunities. That's yep. the thing where you need to start actively looking to fill in those blanks, to start looking and fill in your genius network. 
And imagine, you know, a great exercise like we talked about is start imagining your business without you being the center of it. Imagine your business, just even thinking that thought is a life-changing experience. Yep, so what we said yesterday as a result of, of being here is we not just want to, you know, we don't just want to share strategies and ideas with you, we want actually to change the way you think. Mm -hmm. And this is one of those tools that actually changes how you think about things, how you solve problems, because we want you to have direction, confidence, clarity, and capabilities in your life. And this tool actually helps you get direction, confidence, capabilities, and clarity with relationships. And, uh, and let's bring her a mic, and we'll do a real quick, like, what would you take away? No more than, like, you know, uh, four or five minutes on this because we want to end this episode. Hey, so while we're bringing that mic, I'll say something interesting. That Here's another kind of weird thing that you might think is a little bit weird, but it's really kind of effective, is imagine these, some of these people are people that you don't know or people that are, are dead, that are already gone, people like that have wisdom, that have written uh, things down. And imagine if you could kind of think things through from their perspective, you know, of what, like um, Evan Pagan and I always talked about this, that, you know, imagine if you could sit at a round table and, and have Claude Hopkins as one of your genius network, if you think about a thing and you just visualize and have a conversation with Claude Hopkins, thinking about all the things that you know that he would say about your, your business situation. That would yeah. be awesome. Yeah, there you go. But they have something better. They have I Love yeah. Marketing. That's true. Yeah, so, and, and what we do here, what we do at Platinum, we, we're doing a, a conference on October 3rd, 4th, 5th, and then a Platinum meeting on the 6th. Uh, we don't just teach marketing. We bring people to you. We bring, you know, one of the reasons we do things like this is actually this is a genius network meeting where we want to bring, that's why we'll have guests. That's why we bring speakers and stuff. We want to actually introduce people. That's why I talk about books all the time. You know, one, many of the people that are on my genius network first started with me reading their books, mm -hmm. going to their seminars, attending that stuff. So, yes. Here we go. Uh, so, my name's Hillary Rubin, and uh, thank you guys for this is really genius. Um, what I wanted to know as a coach, and I, kn I have to break the thing in my head because people that I, you know, I do a clarity call or strategy session and then enroll them. Uh, and that's effective because they want that connection because when I'm coaching and working with them, we're going to deep stuff where you have they have to feel safe, almost like a therapist, but not a therapist. Yeah. So in order to um, basically the tiger situation, <laughs> basically mm -hmm. to take me out of this, I've done it with yoga and a yoga DVD, and I have a yoga podcast, which is the foundation of my work. So that's you know going on, and there's people doing it while we're talking here. Mm -hmm. uh, so my, I guess my question is to throw out to you guys of what are some ways to create this as a coach when you know to take yourself from out of being in the center when you know my website hillaryrubin.com right. when my podcast is hillary's yoga practice podcast.com mm -hmm. uh, so that's what i want to kind of see some ideas of as a coach in the position or i know there's other people here that might be trainers or reiki practitioners chiropractors mm -hmm. um, so that's what i wanted to put is how would that how would you use that concept or what ideas you would have on that concept to make that happen? Well, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of learning about it just by being here, for one. Okay, so you continue to package yourself up and sell cloned versions of you. Okay, put yourself in a box as best as you can, online, offline, you know, uh, speaking. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you, you know, it's one of those things to where as you more position yourself, you keep ascending to higher levels. You charge more money. You, you know, you, you create for the greatest needs, desires, wants that people are not only want, but they're willing to pay money for, uh, to whatever things that you can, uh, can and clone yourself, you do that. That's what marketing does. Marketing is the ultimate leveraging of yourself. And then you cherry pick uh, who exactly you're willing to take, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, even my 25K members, I don't offer any additional consulting. I mean, I still, you know, I will give them more access, and obviously I develop personal relationships with a lot of them, but for the most part, 
you know, you, you, you almost have to be able to just say no and not try to, you know, that's why I keep it very separate. I mean, there are things that I do for making money, and there are other times where I'm just willing to go and talk to people. Like, I'll still show up at the I Love Marketing meetup groups, and I'll talk to people, but I'm in the same boat, just like you. Dean's in the same boat. Anyone that's in that sort of thing, you know, there are certain things that are so private, so personal, they just really want to have you. The key is, you know, money. I mean, anyone can have access to Richard Branson if you want to pay, you know, several hundred thousand dollars, you know, but of course he can't say, you know, I want to, because everyone in the planet, like, tries to get access to a guy like that, so <laughs> it's how you structure it. I, I mean, I, I don't think there's a simple answer that we can say. It's just, it, it's really more about you making the decision of, here's what I'm going to charge for that access. I can't try to, you know, the, the, the best way to, you know, uh, be unhappy is try to please everybody. You just can't. And, you know, defining, you know, defining your own rules the way you can. But, you know, maybe we can talk well, about that a little further. But we, we do have a situation with we're past time. I was going to say, let's do that because Eunice has given me the thing. We Thank need to take you. a break. Yeah. And then maybe you want to do a couple of questions after. Well, let's just do just two ra two things you got out of this. The, not questions, but what'd you get out of this? Let's hand them to a couple of people. Then we're going to say goodbye to everyone on this episode. And if people weren't here, this gives them a reason to actually be here so they can see what they you know, get a taste of what they're. So what what'd you get out of this? We'll give it to you, and then we'll bring it up to Tim in the front here. Hi. Hey. Um, I just want to share this. Um, um, one of my profit activators, I've been working on them, uh -huh. is going to the schools because I want to target Sweet 15 and Sweet 16 girls. Uh -huh. Um, but I didn't know how to get into it. And now that I'm looking at it, what I can do is put the name of the principals or the right. person in the school and ask, why can I help them like that they can let me in in the schools to do the promotion? Right. Um, I mean, I've been taking so much about Also, I learned a lot about hiring. Mm -hmm. I can see now why I've been stuck the stock there for so long mm -hmm. is because I don't have the right team and I definitely need to work on these two. So um, do you think I can apply these two to hire people? Or? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Okay. Envision everybody in those circles. What, what's the capability that you need to hire for? And if you don't yeah. have people that work for you that you would be willing to put on your genius network, then that says something about... <laughs> about yeah. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Thank no, you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Time. Thank you. And then let's bring the mic to Tim if we could. And then we got to wrap. Sorry, Angela. You know, this is usually how it comes. I, I just think these forms that Joe's given us here, you know, the, from the Genius Network to the where are you, to the hot seat, to the power of free, the accountability tool, the $10,000 insights, I, I just think these... If we just look at them as a piece of paper, it's a waste of time and money. But if we, he's teaching us how to use them. Yeah. If we do that, like even the top, uh, the where are you, where do you want to go, how are you going to get there, you can take that one tool in your personal life, your business life, your social life, whatever, the same with, uh, as he just taught us with the Genius Network, and do so much with that. A uh, while back, we even used that particular tool, the where are you, where you want to go, how are you going to get there, in an interview situation. It took a, a few minutes to let the uh, gentleman fill out the application, or fill, fill that out instead of a typical application, which he already provided. And as he filled that out, he realized this wasn't the direction he w really wanted and needed to go for him as a career. So rather than getting into a situation of hiring somebody like that, that where it wasn't going to work out long term at all for him, it actually helped us take him off the list and move on and uh, hire some, somebody else. So there's just amazing things you can do with these tools if you use them and implement them. I highly recommend them. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank and you. thank you all. And so for, uh, did you, have you guys been enjoying this uh, Platinum Mini? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. Awesome. Awesome. All right, so I'm Joe Polish. Hey, that's impressive. He's Dean Jackson. I'm Dean Jackson. Goodbye, everybody. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. I'm sorry. I know some of you actually need to use the restroom really badly. So we're going we're gonna to take a 15-minute break, be back in 15 minutes. Thank you very much.